What is up guys, it's Mikey Tamimo here and welcome to my YouTube channel and most of all welcome to my Gothic 3 playthrough the playthrough of the Hushishin Dark Mage, the servant of the god Death Belear and welcome to episode unknown make sure to check the title but I'm you know I'm not quite sure anymore which part it is but if everything works as it should it should be the last part of the ancestors tombs I thought I had them all done but there is one that I haven't done which is this one so uh, without further ado let's go to it Come on, man. I haven't got all day. It's over there.
Where the hell is my companion this time? What are you doing, you golf? Come on, man. Don't be such a fucking idiot. I will stop that beast. He literally just fell down. What are you doing, man? Stop being so such a fucking noob and just keep following me, goddammit. Are you shitting me, man? Yeah, fuck off. I'll take care of this solo endlessly.
rest in peace man rest in peace indeed all right so let's get this final ancestor tomb done Fucking tab bin to respawn again, you gotta love this game sometimes. Well, I can't wait to be done with this shitty ass game, that's for sure. Beating it three times is a bit too much. Let me summon the one thing that's going to be most useless of all. Even more useless than a companion. And it is... Johnny D. It's going to be so useless, this demon. I'm gonna do it this way. If you can't win it, you gotta be smart to win it. Oh, that was not so smart. Oops, wrong one. Demons most right likely already dead. Help out of range. Mm. Are you fucking kidding me? Fucking bugginess of this game. I glitched right through the wall. One thing is certain, I'm glad once I'm done with this game, you know, 
even though it's a great game, the bugs annoy the fuck out of me. What a load of fucking bullshit. I pressed tap like a million times. Well, a million times is, you know, a bit exaggerated, but I was spamming it like about zero fucking response. The only run that I have to do after the, all of these playthroughs is the hardcore run. And once that is done, I'm totally so fucking done with these games. I'm so fucking done. I played this game, the entire gothic series for that matter, a bit too much. Three times a recording. In some gothics games, I had to redo all three parts. Basically all gothic games, except for uh, this one. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting sick and tired of this shitty ass... Well, it's not really shitty as game, but it's not that great either. Gothic 1 and Gothic 2 are the best, hands down. Gothic 3 is, you know, not great. Certainly not bad either. Most definitely not great. Forsaken Gods and Gothic 4 is a disaster. Really? Yeah. Another one of the another annoying things of this game is like when the developers created this game. Yeah, and you have not let's say you have Army of Darkness. All of your mobs go on one NPC for one, and if the mobs attack the NPCs, they go one at a time. But if I go versus a lot of mobs, then they go all at once versus me, which is a bit lame, you know. 
but it's mostly Forsaken Gods and Gothic 4 that uh, destroyed my mood in uh, playing the Gothic games, hands down. I had to redo my play for Ravinos, well, didn't really had to, but, uh, you know, I was not satisfied with the uh, end result, so I had to redo the shitty ass game on the playthrough of Venus, which is fine, but that still means I have to do the playthrough of Adenos and the playthrough of Baliar, and you could say that I'm not really particularly fond of uh, Gothic 3 Forsaken Gods and most certainly Gothic 4. Those two games are my least favorite games of all time. More money grabbing, like a, uh, you know, more like a money grabbing game, if you will. Then it is actually a game. Content is shit. You know, little amount of NPCs where you could actually do questing. If you join one side, you can't do the quest on the other side, you know. The, the same old uh, BS. Which we are pretty used to by, uh... <coughs> by Joe Productions and Parana Bites. And you know, it, it's sad. You know, they say that Gothic 3 Forsaken Gods, especially in the Steam Store, you know, they say it's an expansion. But if you call that shitty ass an, an expansion, then I am from Mars. You know, because it's just not true. Now, if they, w if they actually did, you know, no, oh shit, I'm dead. Yup, I'm dead. GG guys. Oh, lucky me. Well, you know, if if Forsaken Gods was really an expansion, they wouldn't have cut out Nordmar. They wouldn't have cut out Varend. They wouldn't have just reused the same shit like the bundles of weapons, which are totally freaking useless. And most of all, it wouldn't have its own beginning. An expansion has the same beginning as the original game. So, uh, no, Joe Productions, Forsaken Gods is not an expansion. It's more like a uh, money grabbing title than it is a either a standalone game or a expansion. But you could say, you know, I'm not, not really looking forward to play those games. But I will do it nevertheless, even though it goes against my will. Look how fast these skeleton climb. Doesn't make sense either. I have to go all the way around it. But they can just, you know, skip through it, no problem. There's not much that uh, Joe Production did correct in uh, Forsaken Gods and Gothic 3. Gothic 3 they did, here and there, did a few good things. 
don't get me wrong, you know. I love Gothic 3. But I hate Forsaken Gods and I hate for Gothic 4 and Fall of Satyrif. All of three, which are... You know, Fall of Satyrif is also an, an expansion. It's the same kind of disaster like of Gothic 4. Uh, like Gothic Forsaken Gods. Same, you know, same kind of money grabbing business. Just, uh, just to, to profit from the, you know, community. Nothing more, nothing less. Where does that, that scout come from? But sometimes, you know, you just gotta swallow the pride. Did cost me potion, yeah. But no mana, no. Another minor detail that doesn't make sense. Out of the many. But, you know, don't mind my complaining. I, I like to complain, but I, I'm just being honest, you know. I love the gothic games, I really, really do, but if I would look at the entire series as a whole as it is today you know and then I'm not saying I'm gonna remove Forsaken Gods because it doesn't belong there because it's shitty you know or Gothic 4 doesn't belong there because it's Arcania Gothic 4 and not just Gothic 4 and it's fan made no I, if I take the whole thing as a series the series would go from, if I would rate the entire series from Gothic 1 to Gothic 3, it will be about 8 out of 10 easy. However, if I add Forsaken Gods, Gothic 4 and Fall of Satyrif, well then the game drops to about 4 to 5 out of 10. Honestly, you know, that bad. The expansions of Gothic 3 and 4 are that bad. And Gothic 4 in itself is just to cry for, really. So I really hope that once I'm gonna play Elix one day, that uh, I will not be disappointed with the same money-grabbing tactics as that they have been doing with Gothic 3, with Gothic 4, you know. Give us the old classic ways of expansion, like Gothic 2 Knight of the Raven, you know, we want that kind of shit, not Forsaken Gods, not Gothic 4, no, and you know the problem 
is that every time that they want to release a game they cut content. They cut it content out of Gothic 3 which ultimately became Forsaken Gods. They cut it out content out of Forsaken Gods because they were too lazy and they were just like you know we just want to make a quick buck uh, 20 30 euros quickly so let's just you know fill in Murtana with, bu with bullshit and uh, let's block Nordmar and Varen from access. Terrible. Just terrible. But again, that's my humble opinion. And who am I to say if that is true or not? But it is true, you know. Just saying. It's nothing more than a money grabbing scheme. They don't get, you know, they don't seem to give a shit about the harm they that they have caused to the Gothic series. Because if they did, they would have patched it, you know, without. Oh, it's gonna cost us too much time. Oh, it's too expensive to do. No, if they really, really, really wanted to set shit, you know, set things straight, goddammit. Then they would have done so by just simply re-updating the game. Re-agonizing its, uh, you know, content. Because there are lots and lots of content. Even out of Forsaken Gods that have been cut it out due to major bugs, incompletions, quest items not, you know, in the game and what have you. They are in the coding, but not in the game itself. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I'm starting to, you know, dislike Joe a bit. Because they seem to do it over and over and over and over and over again. And it, you know, pisses me off. And I'm pretty sure that most gothic fans will feel about the same. Is that they have uh, fucked things up, to put it bluntly. And it's fine, you know, you know, we all are human, we all make mistakes. But they make the same mistake multiple times because of uh, either Joey Productions or Piranha Bytes, it made no difference who it was. And both of them were too greedy and were like, you know, nope. We're not, we're gonna scrape this, we're gonna scrape that, and let's just release it and ask full price, why not? I would have never bought Forsaken Gods, nor Gothic 4, nor Fall of Satyrif if I didn't gotten it in the bundle in the entire Gothic series for about 12 euros. <coughs> I fucking talk too much and I quick save too fucking little man um, the emotions are getting high again guys but plainly said you know they fucked things up badly they a fucked the gothic series so fucking hard that people don't want to play it anymore and i think that even if they would release an original gothic 4 without all arcania bullshit in front of it you know it's gonna be a money grabbing business watch my word if they would come with uh, let's say gothic 4 it will be a money grabbing business guaranteed they, they, they will not learn you know they just want money Such a shame though, because Gothic 1, Platinum, 10 out of 10, hands down. Is the game bug free? Fuck no. It has so many bugs, it's hard to count. But man, was that game gold. Well, Platinum. 
Gothic 2, same thing, you know. Great game. Here and there, minor bugs, you know. Annoying bugs. But not really, you know, anything to be rage quitted about or something. Or really, really disappointed about, you know. No, no such thing. In Gothic 1 and Gothic 2. Clean, good games. It has its issues, yes it is. But the gameplay overall beats those issues, hands down. And then we're gonna go to Gothic 3. Well, you know, Gothic 3, all great. I love the Mirshana, I love the old um, fact that you have to go to Madonna, North Mars, Varent, you know. Join Zubin for the Hush for the Balear, join Robar for Enos, and uh, Zardas for the Water Mages. All fine and nice, you know. It's a very Nash, but uh, it lacked, you know, it lacked its bit of content. And that's when Sake Gods got released. I was like, yeah, Sake Gods, an expansion. They fixed that shit. Nope. They made it worse. But again, I'm talking way too much. <laughs> Don't mind my kite tactic. But uh, a 1v1, well, one versus an army will not do. And sometimes, you know, when I single click, it, it goes to charge mode. I'm like, how? You know, I'm just clicking. But, good game nevertheless, you know. I'm not gonna lie, Gothic 3 is relatively good. But, it has major issues. Big ones. Go walk back. I'm not. Sorry, guys. But uh, I'm so done with this shit. I don't care if I have to resurrect five million times. I'm not gonna redo the same BS over and over again. So sick and done. Sometimes you just gotta cheat. It's gonna be, you know, a pain in the ass, you could say, with a hardcore run. No deaths, no saving, no reloading, no nothing. <sighs> no healing in inventory. But. I'm glad once I've beaten this game for the last time. Well, say my last time. The hardcore run still remains and will quite some time, I think, remain there as long as I'm not able to stream. Can't do hardcore runs. But uh, at least the casual playthroughs will be done, which is the most important. Because without the casual playthroughs, no hardcore run, and the more ga the more passes a certain game has, 
the more paths I need to beat before the hardcore run is actually unlocked. So let's say Skyrim for example has 10 vanilla races and thus need 11 runs 10 vanilla races and the 11th run for the hardcore run which is gonna be you know time consuming a lot of time consuming to get those done and you know I, I'm currently playing Skyrim without mods and you know it's nice no crashes, no nothing, but uh, I do miss the mods. But the problem with mods is 9 out of 10 makes your save file corrupted as fuck. Make game crashes and whatnot. I'm really, really done with mods. So if I'm gonna do 10 races, it's most likely gonna be without any kind of mods. Maybe a few mods here and there, but not anything wow, like, you know. 150 mods or something, that's way too much. I only have, always, only have issues with mods. And then you've got those, you know, Bethesda mods, but they are just shitty. And you know what, another downside of, you know, playing with mods is no fucking achievements. And then you're like, hey, but there is a you know mod enabler well I, I try to re install that one well replace its file let me put it that way um, which is basically installing it but I tried multiple times and every time it doesn't work because of the new uh, I think it was because what was the bullshit again you know the uh, new special edition uh, mod store BS well, you have to pay coins for worthless piece of mods. Well, those mods are shitty, and the mods that I want, you know, like better weather, uh, more immersive combat, you know, better acrobatic jumping, more gold with merchants, and what have you. There is always a point, always, always around level 30 to about 80. Sometimes it happens at 60, sometimes it happens at 80, but I've done Skyrim playthroughs about 5 to 6 times now throughout my 3, 4 channels. And every time there comes a point where the game just doesn't work at all because of one fucking mod. And, you know, it happened last, again, I was playing, you know, I was busy with the Gothic series, was not really in the mood to redo Gothic Forsaken Gods. So I was like, you know, hey, let's play some Skyrim, and yep, I was around level 30-ish. Already had those videos scheduled for YouTube, you know, you know how it goes. And before you knew it, around level 30, 20, 25 to 30, you guessed it, the grey keeps crashing because I want to go into a certain direction. If I want to ro go around it, it doesn't work. The game just keep crashing and crashing. Then you have to figure out which mod it is. Something can be inserted there. A lot of bullshit things that you have to do when it comes to playing with mods and I love playing with mods and once you play with mods you cannot go back but fuck mods li literally. Well that were all the uh, tombs. Finally. Uh, at least I think it were all. I'm pretty sure that it will. Let me, let me make sure that I got all the loot here. Sorry for all the chatting, guys. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's a bit hard to stay on topic. Gothic, in this case. Alright, so let's TP to the Fire Clan. The Clan of Fire.
About the ancestors, yes. I have the power of Akasha. That's good. What about the other tombs? I have the power of Anar. That's good. What about the other tombs? I have the power of Snor. That's good. What about the other tombs? I have the power of Baldar. That's good. What about the other tombs? I have the power of Angir. That's good. What about the other tombs? I have the power of Beric. That's good. What about the other tombs? I have the power of all ancestors. Good. I knew you were the one who could pull it off. Now finish your task. What task? Chase the orcs out of Nordmar. Destroy the major orc camps and kill their leaders. Make sure that no orc will ever dare to invade Nordmar. Would you teach me how to fight? Alright, so I need to quickly a trainer where I can master my combat capability. So, who should be the best for that option? Well, let me quickly go to. Um, shall I activate the Shrine of Baliar? Um, let me first do the training part. I uh, think Ben Sala can teach me. I need Master Swordsman, which cost me about 9 learning points. And then I will continue the journey. Could be that I'm gonna activate the shrines. Um, the shrines. The uh, Shrine of Baliar. Before I will kill all the orcs in Nordmar. But first, let's learn. Mastery of one handed sword fighting. I want to be a master swordsman. Always keep your eye on your opponent. Some blows can be blocked, others can't. Recognize the difference. Then you can dodge the blows or even beat your opponent to it. So that's done. Alright, so let's quickly activate the Shrine of Belial. I will quick save beforehand in case I will fail any quests or things are not going as I wanted to. But where is Bakaresh? Either way, the Shrine of Belial got to be activated. Where the fuck is Bakaresh? Wow, I'm blind. Alright anyways guys, I'm gonna do that in the next episode. I want to thank you guys for watching. Sorry once again for all the chatting about Skyrim and what have you and mods and the disadvantages of the Gothic 3 Forsaken Gods and Gothic 4 disaster. But you know, sometimes it's just hard to stay on topic. But thank you for guys for watching nevertheless. I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Where we gonna go, first of all, activate the Shrine of Balear, second, deliver all the fire chalices to the Orc Commander, Shaman of Geldern, and third, liberate the Orcs out of Nordmar, which is not that many, we still need the Furnace, and about two or three cities where the Orcs are camping beneath the bridge towards the city. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you like what you see, subscribe to my channel, hit the like button. If you want to see a gothic series, hardcore run. Despite the fact that I'm pretty much done with gothic, I am always capable, if you guys motivate me, to do another gothic run. Speed run, hardcore style run, no deaths allowed, full build in everything that is possible. From a side choosing a side, you know, some spells of Enos will only be allowed to learn if you activate the statuette of Enos, same with Baliar, not the case with Adenos, but thank you guys for watching nevertheless and I hope to see you guys next time.